So I've been working on animation, Tim Boom Harmony, and Blender Grease Pencil for a while now, and I'm still a hobbyist, but this is something I enjoy animating, learning to draw in these different programs, and experimenting with these programs. So I really wanted to give Moho a try. I think I bought this like seven years ago and have yet to try it out. I keep upgrading it, but I haven't had an opportunity to really dive in. So I spent the last couple of weeks going through trainings on their site, which they have great YouTube trainings on Moho. They have a complete how to get started uh, video series, which I highly recommend. I also completed one for Bloop Animation. So I feel like I've got at least the basics down on generally how to use Moho. But I will say the style panel is something that I found very confusing. So as I learned Moho, I wanted to create kind of a vlog of issues I've run into and how to fix those for people who run into the same issues. And hopefully that'll help people get up to speed quicker with Moho than I've been able to. So here's a drawing I created, and this is something I am going to animate. I've already got a script for it and everything. I just wanted to stop what I'm working on to kind of go through the styles panel because it's something I found really difficult to get my head around. So before I talk about this cartoon drawing, I want to go to a simple Moho scene and kind of discuss the style palette first. So I'm going to file new and create a new one. And one thing I really like about Toon Boom Harmony and Blender is I like the ability to apply a style to an object and then be able to change that style later. So I like being able to change the color as I go, line width, uh, the color of the stroke, things like that. And Moho does offer that capability, but the style panel was hard for me to get my head around. It's not as simple as it looks when you compare it to other style panels, but I do think it's very powerful. Uh, there's some elements in here I like a lot more than Toon Boom Harmony. So let me start with this. I'm going to draw a shape. So you can see out here, I've got a vector layer and I'm going to click on the draw shape tool and I'll click the circle. And you can see I'm starting out with a blue fill and a purple stroke at 13 points. So that is what my shape is going to use for its color and its stroke. Now the first thing I found confusing is the transform tool. If I click on that, I can move this around. I can, you know, drag the points around and make changes to those. But with the transform tool, I can't change any of the colors. So to do that, you need to click on the select shape tool which is also Q if you want the shortcut. So I'm going to click on that and you can see that's selected. And over here now I can change the colors if I want to. But you can't do that with the transform tool. That threw me off for a while. You have to use the select shape tool. So if I select it with the select shape tool, I can, like I said, change the colors over here. Now the benefit to the styles menu is I can apply a style to this and then later on change it. What threw me off about this is the style panel you see over here is actually three different functionalities. So I'll go through those. The first one is the top part and you can see it says style shapes and styles. Now, if I click on styles, these are when you create a new scene, the styles it automatically creates. Now I don't typically use any of those. So the first thing I do is hit delete unused styles. And if I click on that drop down again, you can see all those are gone. So the shapes tabs allow you to pick any shapes that are within this vector layer. So if I go back to add a shape, I click on the triangle. It's going to use these colors over here. Now you can see if I go to the drop down, I can pick my second one. Now you can see right here where it says shape. That means that is what function I'm in. Now there is shape functionality. If I click none, these are defaults for the current style. And then if I create a new style, I'm going to change this to line art. You can see now it says style. So if I go to S2, you can see this has a red box around it, which means it's selected. So I can type in the name here. And if I go to S1, I can change this to circle. So if I select triangle and then go in here and change this, you can see I can color these two shapes even though they're in the same layer independently of each other. So if I click on my select shape tool, you can see this goes back to what the circle is shaded at. So again, this top box is kind of its own functionality. Now the next functionality is from here, which is above the fill, down to below the round caps. Even though this all looks like one panel, it's not. It's actually three things. So this is the second area. This is how you create a style and change that style. So if I go to line art, which I just created a minute ago, you can see my line art is the same color as this circle. 
But if I click in it, I want to change it to black. And I want to click off these buttons here. These are override buttons. So if I want this to be line art, actually I have it opposite. Let me click off of this and change this one to black. So now my stroke is black and these are override buttons. When they're clicked and checked, that means they will override whatever I put them on. And I'll explain that in a second. But again, you can see I have a stroke that's black, fill that's black, but I've got that unchecked and I've got both of these checked. So I'm going to increase this up to 25. This is the width of my stroke. So you can see nothing's happened. It's because I haven't applied it to anything. And this brings me to my third part of this panel. So if I've got select shape selected, I want to select that, or I could go up to shapes and select circle either way. And you can see down here, here's the third section. Style one, style two. If I click on style one, you can see this is the same as what's up here. I only have the line art. I'm gonna click on that, click line art, and you can see it automatically changed it. So what's happening is when you create a shape, it has its own set of colors for the stroke and the fill. When you apply a style to it and you apply that down here, it actually overrides the original shape color to then make it fit with the style you've established. And I can select two, and this is great because I like to keep my line art separate from my fill art. So if I go to style and select new, and I'm gonna change this to circle fill. Now I've got this selected. This is how you edit your styles. So you can see right now, this is the line art style. If I go to circle fill. Now this is the same color as the circle, but let me click on here and change it to like a dark blue. And I'll uncheck these next to stroke because I don't want this to have a stroke because I want to keep my fill and my stroke separate. So again, this is part of the confused me. I need to go back, select my select a shape, select a shape. Now you can see this changed and it shows the line art dropdown has been selected. So that has been applied to this shape. If I click on circle fill, you can see that's now changed to the blue. So if I go up to styles, hit circle fill, you can see that's blue. Now say I've applied the style to 20 different objects and I've thought, you know, I don't want purple, I want green. Since I've created this style, if I click on this and change it to green, you can see that automatically updates. That would update across all of the shapes we've got. So if I click on the triangle and you can see down here, there's no styles applied to it. So it is using its existing original styles, which is the stroke and the fill. If I click line art, you can see it changed to black. And if I click circle fill, it's changed to green. So keep that in mind that when you create a shape, it is made up of the existing colors that were already established. The style overrides those. And if you apply it across multiple shapes, then you can change it on the fly. So like if I go to line art and say I want this to look more sketchy and not perfect on the stroke, but I don't want to affect the fill. When I go to stroke, I can select a brush. Let me select this one. So you can see how that updates. So I can change the stroke independently of the fill. Once I got my head around this, I find this method a lot more effective than something like Toon Boom, where I feel like I had to work in the node view a lot to change uh, fills and strokes. And it was a little more intricate. And I feel like this is quickly on the fly, giving you the ability to do that. So I want to mention one other thing, which I think is confusing. So if I go to select a shape and I select my circle. So if I select this and you can see that I have style one and two and I've got those applied. I don't know why you would want this function, but if I go up here and check the override button, it will override that style. It'll do the same thing with the stroke. Again, I'm not sure why you would want that option on a per object basis, but that is there. So if you ever get confused about why isn't my material being applied correctly? That may be why you may have these checked and it's overriding the material even though you've added that material. So keep that in mind. Now here's something else confusing to keep in mind. There's some additional functionality here and you can see like effects one and two here and then effects down here. If I click like drop shadow, you can see it gives me a preview of what that's gonna look like. If I click okay, you can see nothing happens. If I click control R to render this, Still nothing happens. 
that's because you're applying it to the shape's original colors. So again, that's something to keep in mind. If I want to add a drop shadow to this, let me change the spectral plane. I'll go to styles because that's what's been applied. So if I go to styles, circle fill, and now I'm changing the actual style that's been applied to that object. So for this circle fill, I'm going to hit drop shadows. I'll really expand that out. Hit OK. You can see that right here now. If I hit Control R, you can see it here. So again, keep in mind that if something is confusing or not working like it's supposed to, it probably is user error because I ran into that a lot. Just make sure you're checking your overrides and you've applied your styles. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to adjust a style and nothing happened, and that was because on the object I didn't have it selected here in Style 1 and Style 2. So if I go back to my drawing here, I just want to make an example. If I go to like his hair, I just want to give an example of what I'm talking about on a more intricate drawing. So if I go to styles and you can see all the different styles I have applied here, if I click on line art, I don't have any objects selected. So you can see I'm using a width of nine. If I increase that, you can see it increasing on the drawing. It's increasing everywhere. So that's the benefit of this is that, especially line art, if you're using the same stroke across the entire drawing, then you can change it on the fly if you want to, and it'll affect every single thing rather than you having to go on a per shape basis and changing that. So it's very powerful. It just took me a while to get my head around how this panel works because it looks like something using Photoshop, but it's actually more intricate than that. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I will be creating more of these Moho quick tip tutorials to kind of help people who may run into the same problems I'm running into. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.